Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a really casual, chatty get ready with me. I talked about a bunch of different topics. I feel like I was all over the place today, but I wanted to sit down and show you guys my go-to look. I've been doing a very similar look during November and December, a very simple neutral eyeshadow, a red lip. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let's jump into it and I'll show you guys how I got this look chat with you, catch up. Let me know in the comment section below if there are any videos you want to see on my channel and I'll add them to my list. So I did prime my skin using the Catrice Aqua Fresh Hydro Primer. I like to prime my skin and then wait a few minutes before applying foundation if possible because I just think my foundation goes on a lot better. So for foundation, I'm using my go-to, my Fenty foundation. I am mixing 140 with just a little bit of 150. I always say this, but I know my foundation looks a little bit light at first, but it will all even out in the end. I keep moving my mirror and my microphone. I just can't figure out like the perfect setup today for some reason. So if, you know, it keeps switching, that's why. But how are you guys? I feel like I have not sat down and filmed a get ready with me in what feels like forever. I feel like I get to chat with you guys in my other videos on social media in the comment section, but not as much. And honestly, I don't spend as much time on social media as I would like to. And by that, I just mean like chatting with you guys on Instagram, through messages, through DMs. Whenever I have time to, you know, chat with you, I always like to do it in my YouTube comments, but I do need to get better about Instagram. I am so bad at Instagram. If I didn't have a YouTube channel, I probably wouldn't even have like an Instagram account. It's just not a social media site that I enjoy a whole lot. I just don't feel like I ever feel that great leaving it. Like I don't feel bad as I like scroll through pictures and I like to be able to keep up with my friends and my family, but I don't feel like it really, I guess, adds anything to my day. Like it doesn't make it a whole lot better. There are aspects about social media that I love. Like I love being able to stay in touch with people I don't see all the time. My favorite part about social media obviously is YouTube, chatting with you guys. Like I love that so much. But when it comes to like my personal use of social media, I don't love it. I don't find it to be like I said, very beneficial for like my mental health, just for me. I find that I waste a lot of time on it. I've actually stopped scrolling through social media when I wake up in the morning because I used to sit there and like open my phone, check everything, and that's how I would wake up. But I stopped doing that. And it's not that I even follow negative people or people that make me feel bad. It's not that at all. It's like, especially on Twitter, I feel like a lot of the things that show up in my newsfeed or what's it called on Twitter, your homepage, I don't know. Uh, but a lot of the stuff that shows up is stuff that other people liked or commented on. So if people are constantly liking, you know, um, news articles or negative things like that shows up on my home feed. So it's not even like what I follow. It's just the way that the social media homepages are curated. I don't know. I just don't get into it. So I don't even know exactly where I was going with that conversation. I think I was just saying I wish I was better at like going on social media and chatting with you guys on Instagram because it's a different type of interaction. Like I love chatting in the comments of my YouTube videos, but when we're on Instagram, we're usually talking about random things. For example, I told you guys did I tell you on YouTube or did I tell you on Instagram? I think I told you on YouTube that I was planning on buying a vacuum for Black Friday, but a bunch of you guys were messaging me on Instagram, like sharing vacuum recommendations, and I just love that. Like on Instagram, I chat with you guys one-on-one -on -one about the most random things. Like sometimes we talk about serious topics, sometimes we talk about funny things, but in general, it's just like day-to-day -day things like vacuum recommendations. We talk about meal planning, meal prepping, grocery shopping, movies, pets. I was not paying attention and I applied way too much concealer. This is why I have a hard time multitasking when I'm doing my makeup. But anyways, I guess we could talk about that on YouTube as well. But we're always talking about makeup on YouTube, which, you know, this is a makeup channel. So that makes a lot of sense. In 2020, I told you guys this before, I kind of want to incorporate like some sort of lifestyle content on my channel. I don't wanna do a 180 and completely turn my channel into like lifestyle content. I don't even want it to be the main focus on my channel. I was just thinking like once a week, once every two weeks. I mean, I upload a lot. I upload like four times a week. So even if I replace like one of those videos once a week with something a little bit more, a little bit less beauty related, I just think it could be fun to switch it up every once in a while. I always say that. Like I always say I'm going to start doing that and then I never actually do. I just don't really know what to film. So if there is anything like lifestyle related that you guys would want to see on my channel, I guess it could be anything really, whether it's like a vlog or 
even just like a lifestyle favorites video. Maybe I'll kind of switch gears and film like in my kitchen, in my living room sometime. That could be fun. So I'll make that my goal for 2020, just to switch it up on occasion. It doesn't even have to be like super often, but I don't know. I feel like when I watch YouTube channels, I think it's fun when people switch it up every once in a while. Sometimes when channels do like a complete 180 and they switch their content up completely, I get a little bit disappointed because I usually subscribe to a channel, you know, because I like their content. Uh, so don't get me wrong. I won't turn into like a daily vlogger or anything like that. But anyways, how was your Thanksgiving? I hope you guys had an amazing day if you do celebrate Thanksgiving. Ours was very low key, which is the way that I like it. Typically, we travel over Thanksgiving and we go to Iowa. That's where my husband Brady's family lives and we visit them. But this year, we're actually going there for Christmas. Typically, we stay home for Christmas because my husband always has to work Christmas Eve. So by the time he gets off work, we'd have to like fly out on Christmas Day and it's just easier to stay home and go to his family for Thanksgiving. But this year we switched it up. So we did stay home for Thanksgiving and then we're going to be spending Christmas out there in Iowa, which is perfect because my family is getting together like a few days later. We were going to visit some of our extended family in the Chicago area, which is like five hours from Iowa. So we're going to fly to Iowa and then drive over to Chicago and spend a couple of days there, which means Christmas time and like the days leading up to Christmas will be a little bit crazy. So I am trying to pre-film some videos, but anyways, all that to say, we were able to stay home for Thanksgiving. It was very relaxing. We just went to my mom's house. My mom and my sisters and I went out on Black Friday, not to do any like crazy shopping, just to spend time together. We went to like the mall. We actually didn't buy very much. I told you guys that I was planning on buying a vacuum, which I did get. A lot of you guys are asking which vacuum I got. I got one from Target. It's by the brand Dyson. My battery died and I was just sitting here talking and talking and talking. So I don't even know where I left off. I think that it cut me off before I showed you guys me filling in my brows. I used the Hourglass Arch Brow Volumizing Fiber Gel. This has been one of my favorites because it does add color, some fibers, but I do go in and fill them in with a pencil afterwards. So anyways, I did get a vacuum. I feel like home purchases are one of those things that are very necessary, but not a lot of fun because they can be very expensive. Like a vacuum, even though I got it for a discounted price, I think I got it for like 40 or 50% off. It was still expensive. So that was, that pretty much took up like the majority of my Black Friday budget. I wasn't planning on buying a lot. Other than that, I purchased my favorite dry shampoo that was on sale. So I kind of stocked up on that. Well, I just got two of them, but those should last me a good amount of time. And then I did get a winter coat. I am excited about that. It is like full on winter now where I live. We got our first big snow of the season yesterday, and I think we got maybe like five or six inches. So not a ton of snow, but it was like that heavy, wet snow that looks so beautiful because it sticks to all the trees and Anyways, my coat should be here today, so I am excited. Macy's was having a sale. But yeah, that is pretty much everything I got for Black Friday. Let me just finish my brows because I cannot talk and do them at the same time. Okay, I'm going to leave my brows there for now. I will go back in and touch them up in just a second after I do my eyes using the Urban Decay Brow Blade. The pen side of this makes such a difference. You guys will be able to see. I feel like they're mostly done, but then when you go in with this brow blade, like the actual liquid pen side, it just takes them to like the next level. For my eyes, I am going to be using the Going Coconuts palette from ColourPop. I've been talking about this nonstop. It is a neutral eyeshadow palette, but I've really been enjoying this one because it's quick and easy to work with. ColourPop shadows blend out so easily. So I just find that it is like the perfect palette right now and it's just small, compact, it's great. If you have a lot of neutral palettes, I'm not telling you to run out and buy this one because Honestly, you probably have these colors in your collection. So I just used the lightest shade to set my eyeshadow and then I'm going to use this shade in the crease and then I'm not sure what I'm going to go in with after that. My husband and I are going on a date tonight so I thought I would just get ready with you guys on camera. I got him tickets to go see Mannheim Steamroller. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of them. I, I've i heard the name and like obviously my husband listens to them all the time. He is Christmas obsessed. Brady is the type of person who plays Christmas music 
in like July, just not nonstop since July, but like he's like, oh, we're halfway to Christmas. I just want to play Christmas music and get in the mood. So he loves Christmas so much. I think I am going to take a little bit of this shade Shell Yeah, which is slightly more warm toned, but I'm just going to work that into the crease a little bit. But anyways, we are going to go see them tonight and then we're going to go to dinner. We'll probably go to dinner first, just so we're not out super late. We like to go to bed early. I've been trying to get like eight hours of sleep and I wake up at seven most mornings to go work out. On Fridays and Saturdays, I wake up at eight because I go to spin class those days and that doesn't start until a little bit later. So I do get to sleep in, but going to bed at like 11, 12, that's good. Sometimes like I fall into this bad habit where I go to bed so late, like one or two. That hasn't happened a whole lot this year because I'm just so tired. Like I have to get eight hours of sleep. Otherwise, I can't function. Like, I can sleep for like nine or 10 hours, but I feel like eight is more of a reasonable amount. But I'm excited to do something like fun and festive. I don't know. I feel like this holiday season feels so weird because Thanksgiving was so late. And because we're going away for Christmas, it just all feels very, very rushed. Next weekend, we are going to New York. And I, again, I'm so excited. Like, we just wanted to go to New York at Christmas and do like all of the fun New York Christmas related things. I'm going to take this ColourPop Super Shock Shadow. This one is in the shade A Little Quarky. It was part of the Coconuts collection as well and I'm just going to place that all over my lid. Do you guys have any plans for December? Do you travel? Do you stay home? Do you find the holiday season to be fun and festive? Do you get stressed out? I think people react very differently when it comes to holidays. I don't know, I just tend to get very stressed out around this time of the year. So I'm looking forward to going away next weekend to New York and just spending time, the two of us, just hanging out, going to see the tree just kind of getting away. Okay, let me apply my eyeliner. This is the Urban Decay Perversion, and then I'll be right back. Not my best winged liner, but we're just going to go with it. So I'm just going to blend a little bit of that brown shadow on the lower lash line. I'm going to use the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in the shade Hustle. I've really been enjoying these Urban Decay pencils because I just apply them to my waterline and then I kind of smudge them on my lower lash line. And I like them because they blend out easily and there's just a bunch of pretty colors to choose from. So is it too early to ask you guys about your New Year's resolutions? I know, I know it's only December, but I was kind of thinking about mine the other day. I do make them. I know a lot of people don't really make New Year's resolutions anymore but I usually like to come up with just a couple. So last year, I'm trying to think what mine were, to save money, that was a big one, to read 19 books in 2019, which I did do. I'm very proud of myself. I actually read 25. I'm working on number 26 right now. And then what was my third one? I think it was to establish like a really good morning routine, which I gotta be honest, I'm not so great at. But I think for 2020, I do want to do another reading goal. I think that reading has been so good for me this year. And I feel like I just experienced a lot of personal growth from reading just because it really changes your perspective in so many different ways. And I did a lot of different topics. So I just, I really enjoyed it. So I think for 2020, I'm going to try to read one book a week. I think my goal will be 50 books, which honestly is a little bit intimidating, but I think it will kind of cause me to, turn off the TV. And then saving, of course, is always a big important thing, especially because my husband and I might have to end up moving sooner than we expected. So we do own our home. We were planning on staying in this home for a while. We never expected it to be like our forever home because it is pretty small. It works for just the two of us. It's perfect. Honestly, we don't need a ton of space. I feel like when you have a lot of space, you kind of buy things to fill up that space. And we've been able to, you know, keep things to a minimum. And honestly, it just felt like a really good investment. The person that sold it to us had just flipped it. So a lot of the house was redone and we figured that we would buy it live in it for a while, sell it and make a profit probably once we had kids. Um, but anyways, apparently they are planning on doing like expansions, road work with the highways and our house is like right in the path where they want to do that. So apparently due to eminent domain, they might be able to, you know, take our house. Of course, they'll pay us for our house, but we won't have much of a choice if everything goes through and then we will be forced to move. <laughs> they kind of let us know for the first time like last year, but they haven't really kept us very much up to date. But where we're living, they're like clearing out like woods and they've been doing construction for like a year or so it kind of seems like it is going to happen and 
you know, due to that, we'll probably have to end up purchasing a house sooner than we were planning, which kind of sucks because again, we don't have kids yet. Like it's just the two of us. So I don't want to buy a house, you know, with that in mind. I guess it doesn't hurt to plan for the future. But what I'm trying to say is like, we've been able to save a lot of money living in this smaller house and having to possibly move within like the next year or two, whenever they decide to do it, wasn't really in our plans. We live in a small town and the school district where we live is really good, which is part of the reason why we did purchase our house in this school district. We were kind of planning ahead, but there aren't always a ton of houses for sale and the houses that are for sale, like they might be, they might need a lot of work. So I'm not really looking forward to that, but because of all of that, I feel like we've needed to kind of start to plan ahead sooner than we thought we would. I think the worst part is just that it's kind of all up in the air. So there is a possibility that it won't happen. There is a possibility that it will happen, but we don't really know. And no one's really been able to give us like, you know, solid information. This is such a random situation. So I'm not sure if any of you guys have experienced anything like this, but if you have and you have any insight that would be amazing. I don't know how often this happens, honestly. And again, it's kind of like all up in the air. So we don't know if anything's going to happen, but it's just kind of like one of those things that's like, it's always like on the back of our mind. But anyways, all that to say, one of my goals is of course to save money because we might have to end up moving, which, you know, it, it'll be fine in the end. I just, it's like a lesson in letting go because you don't have any control over the situation, which I feel like is a lesson that I've been needing to learn. So it could be for the best. But anyways, let me apply mascara on my bottom lashes and then I'll be right back. I did apply a little bit of concealer to that freckle on my nose as well. While that dries, I'm going to go in with bronzer. So anyways, because we are going out of town, I do need to pre-film some videos for while I'm gone. So if there is anything specific you guys want to see on my channel, just let me know. I think I'll probably pre-film a lot of like my end of the year videos, like best products of 2019, worst products of 2019. I do want to rank all of the eyeshadow palettes that I purchased this year. I can't decide if I'm going to include the palettes I also got in PR that I decided to try out or just the palettes that I purchased. I think that I might just do like the 12 palettes that I purchased rather than including everything because those are the ones that I actually spent my money on. Those are the ones that I decided to buy over anything else. So I think I might just stick with those 12. I'll also do my Project Pan finale. So I'll probably pre-film a couple of those videos because we leave a couple of days before Christmas and then I probably won't be home. I won't be home until after New Year's. I'm just going to apply a little bit of blush. I need to wash my makeup brushes. I keep saying that I'm going to do it and then I don't. My husband is so sweet. He always, I was going to say he helps me wash them, but he pretty much washes them for me. My skin is just really sensitive and I actually struggle with like a little bit of eczema on my hands if I do dishes and use like um, dish soap, especially during the winter time. So he's so kind. He just like puts on Netflix and washes all my brushes for me. He says that it's relaxing, but I honestly know that he's just being kind. But it's funny because we always joke that they should have a company that allows you to like send out your brushes that will wash them for you and send them back. That would be amazing. Obviously, you know, we can just all wash our own makeup brushes, but how nice would that be to just be able to like send them away and then get perfectly clean brushes. All right, I'm almost finished. I'm just applying the Becca highlighter in the shade Champagne Pop and then I will apply my red lip and I'll pretty much be done. I still need to film a video using the ColourPop Pretty Fresh <laughs> Tinted Moisturizer. I meant to film that video like weeks ago. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but honestly, I wear that probably like half the week. I mean, there's seven days in a week, so probably like three days I wear more of like a full coverage look like I'm wearing today, and then two or three days I'll wear like the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer. And then like one or two days I go without makeup, but I do wear it a lot. So I definitely want to do a video where I use it. When I use that product, I typically skip concealer and I skip eyeshadow. I just have like a very quick and easy makeup look. So I will film that for you guys. I promise I will. I'll sit down and film it this weekend. Okay, so for the lips, I'm going to be using the ColourPop Lippy Pencil in the shade Bossy. This is my favorite red lip liner. Whenever I'm doing more of like a classic red, not anything too deep or too orange toned, this is my favorite lip liner. You guys, my hand slipped and then I tried to fix it by overlining and now I just look like, I just look ridiculous. Do you see my Cupid's bow right now? There's like no coming back from messing up red lipstick. I'm just trying to apply concealer right there and hide it. 
I think I'm gonna have to like wipe off the makeup in that spot. Okay, I wiped off the makeup. I'm just applying a little bit of concealer right here. Okay, I set it into place with powder. Let's let's try to fix this. So I'm going to go in with the Physicians Formula Healthy Lip in the shade Fight Free Reticles. This is one of my favorite liquid lipsticks because it's very thin and lightweight and it does dry down to like a matte finish, but it's still a little bit more comfortable than other intensely like long wearing matte liquid lipsticks that I have in my collection. Okay guys, that is the final look. I feel like my lipstick looks a little bit messy today, but I feel like with red lips, it's one of those situations where if you keep going, it gets out of hand very quickly. So I'm going to end it there and just, you know, call it a day. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and just kind of seeing one of my current go-to looks right now. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.